now that you have an example of what the forms you're going to be creating will look like in the end, it's time to explore the Online Designer. The Online Designer is a tool you'll be using to create most of your forms. You can find it by going to the Project Setup page and looking under Design Your Data Collection Instruments. When you first go to the Online Designer, you will have one instrument, My First Instrument. At that time it will only have one field in it, the Record ID. To rename the instrument, click on the Rename button and change it to whatever fits best. Then click Save. You can see that I've already created more fields in this instrument. You can add new forms by clicking the Create button, which will allow you to insert an instrument. To edit a form, mouse over it so you see the pencil icon, and then click. The very first field of the very first form will be your record ID. This field can be edited, but you cannot delete it or move it. There are many different kinds of fields that you can use in a REDCap project. The first is a text field. In a text field, the data enterer will use a keyboard to type out the information needed. To edit a field, you will go to the pencil icon. Here you can see that there are two kinds of text boxes. The text box, which is what you saw with the first name, and the notes box, which is a larger paragraph shaped box. The text box is used for short text, names, etc. The notes box is used for any place someone might have longer notes. Both of them have an extremely high character count, so you don't need to worry about running out of space. In the field label box, you will write out in long form the piece of information that is needed. For example, first name or longer questions such as, how many packs of cigarettes do you smoke a week? These labels are solely for the convenience of you and the person doing data entry. REDCap will refer to the fields by the variable names. These are a short alphanumeric name that you give each field that portrays basic information about what is in it, but doesn't go into nearly as much detail. This will be what is used to identify your variables during analysis, and this is what REDCap uses to identify your variables. You should not change a variable name after you've started collecting data. When you are doing a text field, you can choose to validate. This means that you can tell REDCap that only a certain kind of data can be put in that field. For example, you can insist that it be a date field with a specific format, a date time field, a date time field with seconds. You can say that it has to be an email address, an integer, letters only, a number, a number specified to one or two decimal places, a phone number, a social security number, a specific time, either an hour in minutes or minutes in seconds, or a zip code. Once you've validated a field, REDCap will not let someone enter a different type of information into that field. For example, if a field is validated as a number, you can type the number 13 using digits, but it will not accept it if you write out the word 13. If you want to be able to analyze a text box, as a number or as a date, you must validate the field to that kind of file type. If you collect all your data as text, when you go to import it into your statistical program, the statistical program will read it as text as well, and you will not be able to do any analysis on the numbers or the dates until you go through the very time-consuming process of changing the field type for every single record. Remember to validate your fields if you're going to need to analyze them as a date, or a number, or a time. You can require that the field is filled in before the participant moves on. Required fields behave differently between data entry and surveys. In data entry, the data enterer can skip the item, and then when they go to save, there will be a pop-up notice to let them know this field was skipped. They can choose to leave it blank. In surveys, a participant is not able to continue unless they fill out the required field. We recommend that you use required fields in moderation. There are a couple of reasons for this. One is that it is very frustrating if you are taking a survey 
and you simply don't have the information or don't understand a question or really just don't want to answer for some reason if it won't let you move on from that point. It's a lot easier for those people to just leave it blank than it is to deal with the required field. The other reason is that your participants probably signed a form that indicated they didn't have to answer any questions they didn't want to. By requiring a field, you can put them at odds with that form. A way people often get around this is to have a third option of, I don't want to answer this question. That is an option, but it still requires disclosing more information than simply leaving a blank, and it may be less comfortable for the participant. You can also note a field as containing potentially identifying information. For example, it has a participant's name, or their medical record number, or the part of their address below the state level. If you mark a piece of information as a potential identifier, it'll make it much easier for you to strip this information from your data later on. You can choose some custom alignment on where the position of the field is on the page. This is purely for aesthetic reasons. Play around with it and see what you think works best. The field note will add a small note directly underneath the data entry box. For example, you can see here in birthday, I have a note that the date must be entered in year, month, day format. Another option when you're using text boxes that you have validated as numbers is the minimum and maximum range. These are what we call soft validations, meaning that if someone enters a number outside of those ranges, REDCap will display a pop-up letting them know that they have entered a number outside of the expected range. However, it will let them keep the number in the field and move on. This is to allow for the existence of outliers. However, simply having the pop-up come up can help people identify when they've made a typo. It's a very helpful tool for both you and your data entry person. REDCap has three different kinds of multiple choice questions with more than two answers. The first one is a radio button. Radio buttons are these round buttons where you can only select one answer. REDCap also has check boxes. Check boxes are square boxes where you can select as many answers as you want to. This is the all that applies option. Finally, REDCap has drop down boxes. Here, the data entry person can continue typing, and the drop down menu will help them select their answer. Wherever possible, we suggest that you use some kind of predefined choices, be it the radio buttons, check boxes, multiple choice, or just a simple yes no, rather than try to collect free form text. The multiple choice answers will allow you to collect uniform data. It will require a lot less data cleaning on the back end. To make a multiple choice form, click on the Edit button, or Add Field button, and choose whether you want a drop down list, radio buttons, or check boxes. The basic formatting is the same for all three. Here, you'll supply the field label again, and create the simple variable name. Then, you type out your choices, placing one per line. If you want to manually code the choices, put the number you want to be coded followed by a comma sign. However, if you don't want to manually code your choices, if you just enter your choices at one per line and click Save, REDCap will auto-assign numbers to them. Which one you prefer is entirely up to you. If you have an existing field that already has some data in it where you need to add an additional choice to the list, you can add it in at any place that you want. In my list of movie genres, I forgot drama, and because it's such an important genre, I want it near the top of the list. When you enter a new choice in like this, if you've already collected any data, don't relabel all of your choices. Instead, pick the next number on the list, in this case, that's 8, and use that for your coding. Your participants will see them in the order that you want, and you won't cause any issues with your coding. For this reason, if you have an other field, it's often a good idea to leave some space between it and the answer before it. Depending on what other is going to mean for your project, you may even want to make, give it a number like 99 that's going to make it stick out from all the other answers when you're doing your analysis. It's usually a good idea to have an unknown field. Again, this is going to use a much higher number, 88, 888, 999, something that will immediately stand out when you're doing your analysis. It is usually very helpful when you're doing the analysis to know why a question doesn't have an answer. 
Was it left blank on the participant form, or did your data entry person just skip it? Having a field like unknown in there can help you solve that particular problem. There are two other important things to remember when you're numbering choices. The first is that when items comprise a scale, they must be coded with the same values as a source document. The second is that if the label is a number, for example, you're asking people to choose 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it's usually best practice to code it with the same value as the number itself. So 1 should be coded as 1, 2 is 2, etc. When you're done, click Save. Here you can see how my answer choices have been changed to reflect the decisions that I made in the coding. Where possible, if you have the same answer choices that are going to be repeat from multiple questions, try and keep your coding consistent. In this list, even though the drama was added right away, it's coded as 8, just like previously. When you're doing your analysis, you're not going to be looking at the word labels, you're going to be looking at the coded numbers. Keeping it consistent wherever the answer choices are the same will help prevent mistakes when you're doing your analysis. The next kind of field that you can use is a basic yes-no or true-false field. REDCap has an option for both. If you choose to do a yes-no field, REDCap will automatically provide the choices and code them for you. It will have 1 as yes and 0 as no. This is fairly standard coding in data management. However, it can create problems for people who feel they need to change it later on to add a third option. Very often, people will start with a yes-no field, but then change it to a multiple choice field so they can add a not applicable choice. When they do that, the coding often ends up looking like this. If they already had answers in that field, any no answer they already have is going to disappear because there's no coding option for it anymore. To fix it, if you're going to add an additional field later on, just make sure you keep the 1 yes, 0 no in your data formatting. You could also use the 1 yes, 2 no if that's what makes more sense to you and that's what your statistician wants you to use. However, if you're going to use that, make sure you do not use REDCap's yes, no option, but make radio buttons each time and make sure you're consistent with your coding throughout your database. The next kind of field I'm going to show you is a slider field. The slider field allows people to drag and drop a slider along a range, indicating how strong the sentiment is. Here, you use a standard field label and variable name, and then you can choose the labels that you want to display above the slider. You can choose to put labels on the left, middle, and right-hand sides. You do not have to put labels at all three places if you don't want to. You can also choose to display a number value of 0 to 100. Slider fields are useful because participants often want to please the researchers. They can often remember from event to event that maybe I put four last time, so I better put five this time, so they can show improvement. They are less likely to remember exactly where they dropped a slider, so in some cases the slider field can help researchers gain more accurate results. The next kind of field is a descriptive field. Descriptive fields are fields where the person filling in the document will not enter any information. You can use them to give instructions, show pictures, provide documents, or play videos or audio files. In the descriptive field, you have the field label where you type out information as usual. If you want this to just have something like directions, you'll put those here. Next, you have the option of attaching an image or a file. You can put in just about any kind of file you want. Here I've uploaded the image of a duck and have it set as an inline image so that it displays on the page. You can also display things as just a link. This will make it easy for the person entering information to download them. For example, if you want them to download a release form. If you upload an audio file, the person will be able to play it in an embedded player on the page. You can also link to a video that's hosted someplace else, like YouTube. To do this, you don't upload any documents, but simply enter the URL of the video in question. Then you can choose if you wanted to display inline, like the picture is, or if you wanted to come inside a pop-up. By putting it inside a pop-up, 
people have to click the button and then they'll see the video. The counterpart to attaching files or images in a descriptive field is the file upload field. In a file upload field, you don't enter in any information beyond the usual field label and variable name. This is a field where the data enterer or the participant can upload a file of their own. For example, if you had them download a release form to sign, you may want them to upload that release form so that you have it stored with your records. After you've created the field, you'll see the green Upload Document prompt. The next kind of field I'm going to show you is the e-signature field. The e-signature field allows someone to sign your document electronically. Now, when someone's entering data in this form, they will be able to sign either using their mouse or, if they have a touchscreen device, their finger. The final kind of field that I'm going to go over today are these yellow section headers. Section headers are selected on the drop-down menu and provide these yellow breaks in the pages. In a regular REDCap project without any surveys, they just provide a visual break in the page. The main thing I want you to see here is that you can use basic HTML formatting to format the text that appears in the field label. For example, here I have the font color set to blue, I just googled HTML for blue, and I have the text centered. You can use basic HTML in any field label, and you can also use it in other situations, such as when you're sending survey invitations. This concludes the basic features of the online designer. Next, we'll explore some advanced features.